Uh, we now turn to looking at why cities would want to host uh, mega events. And so why would a country want to host or city want to host a mega event? Uh, the biggest reason is money. Uh, the expected revenue from the event and from the tourists um, would be a boom to that local economy. Uh, now, consultants have done economic impact studies claiming the huge benefits for the local economy. And the overwhelming consensus among the economists is that the sporting events, unfortunately, have little to no significant short-run economic impact on the local economy. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Why? Um, now, one-time events generate revenue streams that are very similar to those generated by sports teams. Um, here we have some examples. You have broadcasting rights, sponsors, tickets, <coughs> uh, merchandise licensing, um, and so forth. Okay. Now, unlike the sports, um, a regular sports team, however, uh, you have the sanctioning body, for example, the International Olympic Committee, that controls these revenues. So what ends up happening is that much of the direct revenue that hosting a mega event generates does not stay in the host city. Um, however, the host city can still benefit because of the indirect expenditures by tourists who come to watch the game. We'll talk about that a little bit. So. When it comes to these mega events, consultants will commonly generate what are known as ex ante economic impact studies. So these are studies that happen before the event that predict what will happen. Uh, the studies will estimate the number of people who will attend the event and how many days they're going to stay, how much they're going to spend, um, and apply what's known as an economic multiplier to account for the ripple effects that go through the economy. So for example, um, people come in to spend money. That money is spent at local hotels, restaurants, bars, whatever it may be. Okay. Well, that money that comes in is then paid to the employees and owners of those establishments, who can then spend, who can then go for and go forward and spend that money on other businesses. And so you see it. You know, the money goes first to the direct businesses, and then the employees, and they spend it in another business, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, an example of one of these studies is the that was public um, is the Super Bowl that was held in Atlanta in 1994. Uh, the the economic impact analysis of the event. Uh, by local economists estimated that roughly 75,000 visitors would stay an average of four days. Um, and they estimated that a typical visitor would spend $252 a day. And so when you worked in the multiplier effect and the number of um, visitors, they found that daily spending had a direct impact of $77.3 million. Now, as I mentioned with the multiplier, um, that money spent is likely to circulate throughout the city and whatever local economy is um, as it's respent. So looking at the study of Atlanta, um, the author of the study found that the multiplier was 2.148. So for every dollar that was directly spent, um, there would be $2 roughly you know, multiplied as it circulates through. And so the direct impact of 77.3 million would have a total impact of 1 point, or sorry, 166 million. Now, there are some problems with these ex ante economic impact studies. Um, one of the main ones is just unrealistic projections. Uh, for example, with the 2005 NBA All Star game. The Denver tourism officials predict that there would be 100,000 visitors that would come to town for the game. But the game had a seating capacity of about 18,000, and there was fewer than 9,002 hotel rooms. So, you know, an economic windfall of 30 million is predicted, but the reality was far less than that. Uh, another example is the 2014 Super Bowl. 
um, which is just outside New York City, had a projected predicted economic impact of over half a billion dollar, dollars. Uh, every hotel room in town was expected to sell out. Um, but because, despite that, the fact that the New York area has about 115,000 hotel rooms and MetLife Stadium, where the Super Bowl was, holds hold it fewer than 83,000 fans. Um, and then if you look just four days before the Super Bowl, only two-thirds of Manhattan hotels had rooms available. Um, or two-thirds did have rooms available. And they had to drop the price 30% from the peak because they couldn't fill it. So these are just two examples of where the estimates were overstated pretty drastically. So one of the problems that we have with the, or another one of the problems we have with the um, mega events when it comes to the studies is what's known as the substitution effect. So the substitution effect occurs when a sporting event attracts spending that otherwise would have been spent elsewhere in the local economy. So, for, for example, um, if there is a uh, Olympics in a city and residents of that city go and they spend money there, um, you know, the games, um, for whatever, maybe souvenirs or food or tickets, whatnot. Right? That's money that they now do not have to spend on other things that they probably would have spent in the city. Right? So, uh, because of this, a lot of economists say that the economic impact study should only include spending from out-of-towners and not include locals, since that money would have already been spent on in the local economy. And so, mega events are often characterized by the extent uh, to which they attract fans from outside the region. Um, and so, the larger the percentage that come from outside the region, the smaller the substitution effect. Um, another problem with these studies is what is called uh, leakage. So, the use of the multiplication the multiplier, rather, magnifies any errors that are made while estimating the direct economic impact of an event. Okay. So, if you apply an unrealistic high number, it's going to over-exaggerate the economic impact. And leakages also may be worse than during a normal sporting event. Um, and so, you know, with the multiplier effect, if they overestimate it, um, let's say, you know, in the example we did with the study for the uh, Super Bowl, it was, I think, like 2.1. Well, if they said it's 3, that's going to be a, that's a big difference. And so a lot of times that ends up getting um, overestimated, which results in a lower than expected economic impact. Um, another problem is what's known as crowding out. So... Just as the case with the substitution effect, um, a good economic impact study will subtract out um, the non-locals, basically. Sorry, it'll, it'll subtract out the impact from the locals. Right? Um, and a lot of times what ends up happening is when other people come in to view the games, that means that locals cannot view it. And so these outsiders that come in crowd out the locals from being able to see the games, which does end up hurting the non-monetary um, aspect of it. Uh, so the other type of study when looking at the benefits of hosting mega events is ex post economic studies. So this looks at what happened, or it, this looks at the impact after the event actually happened. And so economists look for changes in economic variables such as personal income, employment, taxable sales, tourists, and other data that might show um, what the actual impact of that mega event. Overall, independent studies by research, researchers who are not associated with the events or the local governments have 
unfortunately tended to show little to no economic impact from a broad range of sporting events. Um, a lot of the studies that are out there, and this just lists some of them, um, they they will a lot of times be flawed for the reasons we had. They, they're going to overestimate it um, and so forth. But here are just some examples of different studies that have been done. So now let's look at the couple of the quick long run um, benefits. So short run, we talked about how there's not much of a um, benefit. Long run, however, there can be. Um, so one of the reasons is general infrastructure. Spending on general infrastructure improvements has a potential for positive returns for the city as a, as a whole. Um, so a lot of times when these mega events are coming to these areas, um, the idea is that in order to be able to host them and to um, support all of it, the hosting cities a lot of times will have to invest in their infrastructure. And this will a lot of times be a big selling point when it comes to it because they look, you know, we're going to bring the games here and we're going to be using that money for um, upgrading the roads ahead of time. We're going to be using new sporting facilities um, and so forth. And in general, that has been shown to be the case. The other big long-term um, benefit of these events is the advertising and branding part of it. Uh, now, Vega, a mega event can increase the profile of a city as a major tourist or business destination. Um, for example, Barcelona, which is often cited as hosting one of the most economically successful Olympics um, was relatively unknown prior to 1992 and it, it received less than half the number of annual visitors that Madrid, which is its neighbor, had been um, receiving. Now, leading up to it, it focused its Olympic preparations on revitalizing its harbor and central business district, minimizing its spending on sports facilities, um, and highlighted its non-sports offering. Okay. And after the games, um, Barcelona experienced one of the biggest, one of the fastest growths um, throughout Europe's major cities. And it became a very popular tourist destination for that reason. And so, and so the idea was, um, they were able to go in and spend and really create a name for themselves um, and you know build a brand off of having the Olympics and then build off of that. And so that's a big long-term benefit um, that will go well past when the games are. So that's just a quick look at the um, short and long-term benefits of hosting a mega event.